Next, I want to talk about remote graphics. Last year, we introduced you to the idea of remote graphics. Why did we work on remote graphics? We worked on remote graphics for several reasons. And I'm going to highlight some of them. The reasons are, obviously, the way we work has changed. We don't sit at our desk anymore. As a result, we bring whatever computer we bring to work. They call it BYOD. Some people call it the consumerization of IT. But it's a relatively easy concept to understand. Back in the good old days, we used to get company cars. Who gets a company car today? Back in the good old days, we get company computers. It is almost ridiculous to get one in the future. You're already going to have a computer by the time you get to work, we hope. And so if you already had a computer, why wouldn't you want to just use that computer? Bring your own device, consumerization of IT. The network has now become completely heterogeneous. IT departments are going absolutely berserk. We also know that data is getting larger and larger. The architecture of the personal computer and the way we set up our corporate network is related to the type of work we were doing. It made more sense to copy the file from the server to the client, store it on swap space locally, we used to call them swap space, DRAM, disk, and you process it locally. You process it locally. When you're done with the result, you save it back to the file server. You have a copy of that data. I have a copy of that data. We all have a copy of that data. It's the antithesis of staying in sync. Well, today, the data is too big. We have customers who are copying so much data, it takes 24 hours to literally copy the data to another site for them to dink on it, just to copy it another 24 hours. And by the time that they copy the back, the team locally has already changed the data. Data has become so large, whether you're designing CAD data or financial data, data is just so large anymore that it makes no sense to copy it to your PC. You now want to copy your PC to the data. You want to move the processing to the data. Notice cloud computing. Shazam wouldn't be possible if we all had our little Shazam program. It's almost nonsense. The future of computing made possible because of mobile computing, affected by large data, the way that we work, how we look at computers, is going to affect the architecture of the enterprise. Nearly a decade ago, we started to invent technology to make this possible. Last GTC, I talked about the virtual GPU. The remote graphics technology, the virtual GPU technology, and to, and to enable this new enterprise. This new enterprise where the data is actually in the server. We do computing in the server. But because we can process it so quickly, send you the graphics results so quickly that you think the computer is actually under your desk. You think that the computer is actually in your device. Remote graphics. So we described the technology last year. And this year, I'm pleased to say and pleased to announce that nearly all of the major players of the enterprise computing world are now partners and are in production. Citrix is in production. Microsoft is in production. VMware is in production. The NVIDIA grid processors are designed into these specialized servers from Cisco, from Dell, from IBM, HP. And there are 75 large-scale trials that are happening right now as we speak. Because people all have similar problems like this. This is one that you guys are going to read about, or you guys, gonna, you guys can go see in one of the sessions from Applied Materials. They build some of the world's most complex manufacturing equipment, semiconductors. You might think that these semiconductors are small, so the equipment is small. These, the equipment is room size. Thousands of engineers work on this simultaneously. 
moving the data to each one of their workstations, synchronizing them, was just an impossible task. Finally, one day, they put the GPUs in the server, started working on remote graphics, and today, their engineers could sit anywhere. They could take their workstation home with them because there's nothing on it. There's nothing on that workstation. All of the work is still done in the server. It does it so fast that it, and it sends the output, the pixel outputs, the graphics outputs to your laptop or tablet so quickly that you think you're connected to the computer. You could do it from anywhere within the corporation because you're done doing it wirelessly. You could take it home. Security is much easier to manage. And because they run a global site, they follow the sun. Could you imagine copying that data following the sun? They now just follow the sun. Everybody's connected all the time. So you can hear more about their work, really exciting about their trial. There's 75 others like it, and we're now in production with grid enterprise servers. This is for enterprise computing, large-scale enterprise computing, where people have IT departments, and you want to be able to work on large data, collaborate, and be able to do your work on any device. And do it from anywhere. Well, there's, there are some people whose work can't be solved this way. And it turns out that, that um, there's a lot of small, medium businesses around the world who are designing little gadgets, they're creating commercials, they're outsourced, um, they're outsourcing partners for large enterprises, they're creating parts of a movie, they're a small, medium business, they don't have an IT department, they don't have an enterprise server. They buy their computers from the Apple store. But they have computational problems and challenges just like the ones that I described earlier. They would like to have the ability to be remote, to be heterogeneous, to be able to work from anywhere, to be able to share and work on one massive database without having to synchronize it and copy it all over the place. And of course, security is of paramount concern for some of these small and medium businesses because oftentimes they're working on data that belongs to someone else. It could also be a single application, dedicated application environment. For example, if you were trying to figure out a way to create the modern showroom, the modern dealer, real estate's expensive, inventory is expensive, people want more and more styles, People want to personalize more and more. It's really, really hard to sell cars the old-fashioned way. How do you create the ability to do digital configuration, virtual configuration, buy your car in that modern way, but you don't have an IT department? You can't set up a workstation network. What if you have 600 million subscribers? They're spread out all over the world. They're your cable TV customers. 600 million of them, and cable television, as you know, cable set-top boxes are upgraded every, well, every time I move to a new house. So long as, so long as it's HD, I'm good to go. And so the ability for them to maintain and, and enhance the software when 600 million set-top boxes are all with different architectures that they purchased over the last 20 years. The software maintenance nightmare is paramount. What if we could put that in the cloud? But you need to have a remote control. You know, when I change the channel, I like it to happen today. I like it to happen right away. So how do you do that? Maybe that's a single application environment, doesn't need a general purpose server that could benefit from a different type of architecture. What if you're a small, medium business and um, you, know, you want to work in a modern way uh, with, without the support of a large IT department and you, you do your work on your workstation, but you want to be able to collaborate. You just want to walk away from your desk and bring all of your stuff with you. 
so that you could do a design review, you could share it with other people, you could argue with it with, with other people and make it better? How do you do that? And so our thinking is that what these environments need, what these work areas need, what these customers need, the way that they do their work, the problems they want to solve, is not a large rack of enterprise servers, but it's something much simpler than that. And we call it the world's first visual computing appliance. It's a visual computing appliance. It's not a server, it's a system. It's NVIDIA's first system. It's the first system we've ever created. It's an entire end-to-end -end system. All the software is integrated. The entire experience is integrated. It's a visual computing appliance. And we think that it's like, can we, um, can we change the slide now? Maybe if you could just, without going forward, but just can you reveal the NVIDIA visual computing appliance I couldn't imagine that being any more clumsy. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you all for coming. We're about to go into <laughs> the fifth part, if you're keeping track, of our talk. We're about to in announce a brand new product, if, if you didn't pick up from that. Uh, so, so we created this appliance. It's an entire integrated system, and we call it the Grid VCA. Ladies and gentlemen, NVIDIA's first integrated system. Now, this particular system is for you in height. It was... Um, uh, it's, it fits into a server rack, and um, let's see what's inside it. Inside it are two of the highest performance Xeon processors, each with 16 threads. And they're connected to two, 392 gigabytes of system memory. Can you show that to me? And backed up by that, eight grid GPUs. Each with two of our most advanced Kepler GPUs. All of that is integrated into one single appliance. It's a little bit like a router. It's like a network storage, network storage device. You buy the box, and it comes with all the system software necessary for it. You, it has a hypervisor. It supports 16 virtual machines. These 16 virtual machines could run 16 completely different applications. It could be connected to as many devices as you would like it to be connected on your network. Each one of the devices simply needs to lo download and install a thin little client called the grid client. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the NVIDIA Grid VCA. And so, um, maybe, if, thank you. This, you could tell that this is where it got late last night. Okay, so this is the way that the VCA, the, the grid VCA works. It gets connected to your network, small group. As many people as you have could be connected to it. All they need is a little tiny client, kind of like a Netflix client, if you will. Except when you pop open this client, your virtual workspace, your remote workspace, completely GPU accelerated, shows up. As many people are, can be connected to it as you like, so if this particular office has 50 people, they can all effectively have a powerful workstation on their desk. It doesn't matter if it's a Mac. It doesn't matter if it's a PC or even an Android thin client. 
the computer in the back runs the applications, and all they see is the pixels. All they see are the pixels, and it's doing it so fast that you think those pixels are being generated by your computer. And so all of these users on the network all think that they have their own personal computer. All they think, they all think they have the super workstation on their desk. And if each one of them is some three to four to five thousand dollars, and you have 50 users on the network, you could imagine how the price or the value uh, is translated. Well, let's take a look at how it works. Okay, Ian, this is Ian, everyone. You've seen him before. Hi, Jason. Ian has done a lot of demos with us. And so, so this is, first of all, let me describe what you're looking at. You're looking at the grid VCA. <laughs> Can I go back to the last slide? <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're looking at the grid VCA. It's connected wirelessly to um, Ian's Macintosh. The applications that are running on the VCA, there could be 16 concurrent applications running. Okay? And so now we're going to look at Ian's Mac. You could tell I'm O time because I still call it a Macintosh. <laughs> yeah, so as Jensen mentioned, we, uh, we have the MacBook Pro here. And on the MacBook Pro, we have three workspaces. Uh, let me just launch them so you can see what's connected. So effectively, we have three workstations, three high-end workstations. They're all running different applications. You can see each one individually. Probably some of you will recognize this is Autodesk 3D Studio Max. And some of you also may know that Autodesk 3D Studio Max doesn't actually run on a Macintosh. But here, I've got the full interactivity and capability. You can see the ray trace image from the iRay renderer there. I got full interactivity with the application. I can manipulate it as it is. But then I can just as easily switch to something else. So for example, I have a, a tech preview of what Adobe Premiere would look like running on uh, the, grid pro, the grid VCA system. Now, this video, that tell video. us, what was that video all about? What's the big deal of that video? That video actually was a video that we shot. It's a red, it was shot in red 4K footage. And then we, we actually created a short HD movie of it, which is what you're looking at right now. And again, I've got full you could, you could you could process it in real time. You could do post-processing. You I could can scrub. Scrub and things like that. I can actually just go ahead and add a blurriness factor to it. Look and, at that. Uh, Image processing in real time. As you can see. So not only, the, not, only, not only does it not matter that a particular application doesn't run on the Mac. That's right. The, the application is running so fast. And it's running at a performance level that's not possible in something of this form factor. Absolutely. Uh, and likewise, as you're seeing here, you can connect to multiple grid workspace sessions so that you can actually jump between applications and, again, get full application performance as if you had multiple workstations at your fingertips. That's right. And so, so just now as I was describing it, it's almost I, I describe it as, as if you have your own personal high-end PC right under your desk. But that's, in fact, not stating it properly. Right? You, have, you have all of those workstations at your fingertips. And if you, if you wanted to access all 16 of them, I mean, that's really, quite frankly, possible. Absolutely. Yeah. And as another good example, we, have, uh, we switched industries here. And we actually have an application, SolidWorks, which, again, some of you may know doesn't actually run on the Macintosh. But again, we've, we've got a fully interactive 3D workstation application. I can just go and manipulate the view. I can go and explode this particular model. I can then move it around. Now what's what's again. Really, really interesting is that all the applications just work. Absolutely. Right? All this is a virtual environment. It's a virtual machine. But within that virtual machine, and there's 16 of them, those virtual machines are all fully GPU accelerated. Absolutely. And they're compatible with all the software. Absolutely. All so if I wanted to load Battlefield 3 on here, it would just work. Yes, yeah. that would, that's absolutely true. All that we've taken for granted in the workstation world is now able to move directly to the grid VCA. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm.